Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. My name is Zachary Conan, and I have until the end of this cigarette to tell you what I think about Street Fighter 2, the animated movie from 1994. Mm, ready, fight! I love Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. My youth was governed by arcade politics, and if you want to know the philosophy of four year old Zachary Conan, watch this movie over and over, and you might understand why I celebrate tropes as much as I do. On this channel, we do a lot of celebrating of tropes, and this film is an encapsulation of all of the tropes that kind of molded me into this insane cinephile and action movie buff that I am today. You have Van Damme. You have Bruce Lee, martial arts, acrobatics. You have everything that I love that most people would probably find nauseating about the action genre in one film. And what is interesting about this movie is that it's fantastic, right? And that it's an adaptation of a video game. So why do most adaptations of video games into film fail so ultimately and so pitifully? Well, I think it's very obvious. There's a lot of um, theorizing as to why, but I think that the answer is grave and obvious. A video game is an interactive media, and it's in essence visceral because you are actively participating in it unfolding. It will not unfold unless you press a button. And I guess I shouldn't go any further either without saying that Street Fighter 2, the arcade game, is one of the greatest games of all time. It's obviously the greatest uh, fighting game ever made, and it's one of the best things that video games as a medium has uh, released. The uh, the gameplay mechanics are amazing, they are very intuitive, you feel like you are an active participant in this game, and it, it really transports you into the universe, into the atmospherics of Street Fighter 2, much like this film. So in order to make a great film based on a video game, you have to establish a symbiotic relationship between the two medias, between the adaptation and the original carbon copy. You have to make it symbiotic. So, Street Fighter II, the animated series, gives us heroes that we could actually worship. We thought we knew them. There are certain plot panels, story panels, in the arcade game itself, but they're very rudimentary, right? They're incredibly elementary. Uh, very vague and just kind of funny. Whereas the film gives us... Um, it fleshes them out in the most bizarre way, in a way that possibly only Japanese and Australian animators could do. It fleshes them out by giving them troops, by making them more similar to what we thought. It, 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 it gives us the food that we need. We are the baby birds, and uh, Capcom Entertainment is here to feed us in this instance. It forms a symbiotic relationship, where when you go back to the game, you know more about it, because it has infused these characters with philosophy, with pathos, with emotionality, with characterization, with drive, and with purpose. And in doing so, with infusing those video game characters with all of those different ingredients and qualities, it makes the game even more visceral, even more interactive, and even more, um, even more incredible. It has to form that symbiotic relationship, otherwise you are diluting the original media, because it's already interactive. It's already as interactive as virtual media could possibly be, or else if you don't make it symbiotic, you are diluting it, and Street Fighter II, the animated film, makes it symbiotic. And also, compositionally, it is wonderful! Um, the, the fight scene between Vega and Chun-Li, and Chun-Li, oh my god, four-year-old me loved you, and by the way, 29-year-old me loves you even more. The scene where Vega ambushes Chun-Li after she takes her shower, oh my god, is one of the greatest. I don't care if it's live action or a cartoon, animated, whatever. It's one of the greatest fight scenes in action movies. I do seven essentials on this channel. It would be one of the seven essential action movie fight scenes ever ever is wonderfully choreographed. Um, Chun-Li telegraphs her, her special moves from the game, uh, solidifying this symbiotic relationship that I'm talking about. She does her fucking lightning kicks, she screams all of her special moves, and we have Vega with his vanity and with his claws, and the blood is so amazing in that scene. It is, it is a neon. It is an arcade fire neon. It is incredible. Riddle. That is one of the best composed action scenes I've ever seen. It also has several instances of, of suspense, because you have Guile trying to make it there in time to save her, and you don't know if she's a skilled enough fighter to do so, but thankfully she's Chun-Li, and she's one of the baddest motherfuckers on the planet. So yeah, she dispatches Vega, well, not easily. It is such a bare-knuckle brawl that is so good. One of the best action scenes ever 
in film. I also love the Fei Long and Ryu action scene that occurs earlier, that, that, that fight scene. I thought that was incredible. Fei Long, obviously the analog for Bruce Lee. Every single action video game from the early 90s and late 80s that was worth their worth or value in salt had a Bruce Lee analog from like Liu Kang for Mortal Kombat or Forest Law or Martial Law for the Tekken series. Fei Long is that for Street Fighter 2. And that's an amazing, that's an amazing scene. That's an amazingly choreographed scene. It's incredible. A celebration of tropes, a celebration of wild mania, and there are certainly plot holes. Things are certainly cheesy, things are certainly nauseating, but that's all to benefit the symbiotic relationship that exists between film and game. And, it, and it's absolutely beautiful that way. Mmm! I love this movie, man. I love this movie, and I'm attracted to villains. Street Fighter II, the animated series, gives us amazing villains! Amazing villains, Bison Vega Sagat, who is uh, lifted directly from Van Damme's kickboxer. It is a celebration of everything that I love in bad 80s, 90s martial arts or action movies. And it somehow, it's, and making it a celebration of all of those things, and trying to infuse possibly, um, possibly a rudimentary Eastern spirituality onto these Western popular uh, iconography or concepts, it kind of elevates certain things as well. That might be getting a, too, a bit too lofty for this particular film, but I absolutely loved this particular film. I think it's a classic. I remember watching the VHS. I recorded it off of television. Watched it all of the time. Loved it. I might have watched it more than I played the game. <laughs> That's how much I loved this movie. And I'm very glad that the, the Blu-ray exists. Uncut, glorious, HD, wonderful. It's one of the few Blu-rays, and I'm like, that's good that that physical media exists. I, I love this film. What did you guys think of this film? Are there any other video game adaptations into film that you guys like? Let me know in the comments. Um, where would this film rest if you had to give me a top five video game to film adaptations? That's a really difficult thing to do because there aren't five good video game to film adaptations. This is obviously Dollars to Donuts, the absolute best example of it. Because it's about that symbiotic relationship. You have to make it something where it feeds off of something else. You, if it's already interactive, if it's already visceral, all you're going to do is dilute it by making it non-interactive and static. You can't do that. You have to make it benefit the other and make it a multimedia, multi-textual experience. And that's what Capcom and the animators and the directors and choreographers and writers understood. I don't know why we can't understand that today. But my name is Zachary Conan. I hope you enjoyed this video. And definitely subscribe to the channel. This has been an ashtray chat and review. <sighs> 1994 was a good year, my dudes. Oh, man. We got them, boys.